Welcome to week four, everybody. So last week we had quite a bit of work to do um, since I, I asked you to read two variations of decolonial texts, um, Foghorn and, of course, Completing a Tempest. And we did that so that we could begin thinking of the various ways that postcolonial themes emerge in in various uh, contemporary theatrical traditions. And so we, we primarily were engaging in that kind of spectrum, or maybe you could even say a continuum of post-colonial ideation. This week, we are going to be focusing on the development of the ideas that were inspired from the readings of those plays for your first major essay assignment, which is to summon last quarter's discussion of The Tempest with this quarter's reading of A Tempest. And so we are performing a comparative examination around these plays and our understanding of these plays. And through that emerges perhaps a more kind of conscientious and personal reflection of what post-colonialism is. Thinking about Said's Orientalism and the way that Césaire has rendered his, his contemporary manifestation of Shakespeare's classic. So that is the, the paper topic that you're going to be working on for the week which is why I've toned down some of the, the other work in the class. However, we are continuing um, through time to discuss Maria, uh, Maria Elena Fornese's Fefu and Her Friends, which was first produced in the late 70s, and it was right in the, the belly of second wave feminism as you're going to read about in the supplemental article that I've provided, Rampton's Four Waves of Feminism. Um, so make sure you definitely read that as well. This play is very interesting in the fact that plot is not central to the design. And this is something that Fornes makes very explicit. Um, it is intentional. It is her 14th play. This was a major hit and by critics and by audiences alike. It somehow captured the zeitgeist of the time. And it's a little challenging to read because you may even see in there that there are elements that almost kind of appear absurdist However, you don't want to mistake this for the, the bald soprano, for example. It is not functioning in that, uh, in that vein at all. And in fact, this is very much a message play of its own. I don't want to give you too much background on Fefu and her friends, or Fornes for that matter, yet. I want you to wrestle with the text. I feel like it can be a little bit challenging in the way that it moves, as it does not follow any kind of central plot structure, despite the fact that the entire play takes place in one day. What I want you to do is, with this rather unique con construction of, of the play, instead of determining that it's strange, determine why Fornese has decided to render the play the way it is. It is all very conscious. And for you to also be thinking about these ideas of feminism. Is this a feminist play? How is it a feminist play? Is it a feminist play according to Rampton's definitions of second wave, which this play would have solidly fit uh, right into uh, time-wise? 
Is it a critique of second wave feminism? Is it a variation of second wave feminism? Is it largely located directly in the, the rhetoric and ideals of second wave feminism? These are all questions to kind of consider. And for you to tackle why the play is written the way it is. Let's be paying attention to um, format, structure, motif, theme, all kinds of elements um, as we read this play. We are going to be reading it for the whole week, so there's not a lot of intense reading this week, largely so that you can focus on the essay. And then there is a discussion question um, due toward uh, closer to the end of the week after you have finished reading Fefu and you've read Rampton's article on the four waves of feminism to reflect a little on the choices that Fornes makes and what you make of them, what you think of them. And you all can kind of debate that mystery. Have fun and I'll see you on Thursday.